Using the stability criterion in discrete time is very similar to the continuous time case. Still, let's do some examples and maybe see an application or two. Let's begin with something fun. Consider the cosine button smash problem, where you input a number into your calculator, hit cosine over and over and over again, and no matter what you started with, it seems to converge to some number. Make sure you're in radians and not degrees. Let's think about this in terms of a dynamical system. Let's write this as the discrete time system xn plus 1 equals cosine xn. And now let's do what we do. The first step is to solve for the equilibrium. Now, this is a little difficult because I have to solve the equation x equals cosine of x. And I don't know how to get a precise numerical value for that. I don't know, maybe I could use Newton's method, or maybe I could uh, try graphing it and uh, finding a value, something like that. I don't know. But, but I do know that there is one and only one solution to this. I can reason as so. If I look at x minus cosine of x, then when x equals 0, I get negative 1. When x equals pi over 2, I get pi over 2 minus cosine pi over 2. That's pi over 2 minus 0. That's pi over 2. This is a continuous function that, as x goes from 0 to pi over 2, goes from being negative to positive. That means there is a root in there somewhere. And with a little argument from monotonicity, we can get that there's just one root. OK, so I know that there's an equilibrium somewhere between 0 and pi over 2. Well, what am I going to do with that? I'm going to check for stability. I'm going to compute the derivative of the right-hand side. That derivative, the derivative of cosine of x with respect to x, is minus sine of x. And I have to evaluate this at this equilibrium that's somewhere between 0 and pi over 2. I know, I know that this is going to be a number somewhere between negative 1 and 0. And in particular, it is strictly less than 1 in absolute value. That means this is a stable equilibrium. So that's pretty nice. In this system, we can prove that this value is a stable equilibrium, and that explains some of the things that we see experimentally. Now, speaking of Newton's method, do you remember how that works? That's a way of finding the root of some function, let's say g of x. And the way you do this is you set up a discrete time dynamical system. You pick some initial condition x0, and then you feed it into the iterative scheme xn plus 1 equals xn minus g of xn divided by g prime of xn. Do you remember that back when you learned calculus? This is really a discrete time dynamical system. And let's see what happens. Back when we learned this in calculus, we just sort of hoped that this converged to a root. Let's see what happens by solving for equilibria. To do so, we have to plug in x in for xn and xn plus 1. That gives us the equation x equals x minus g of x over g prime of x. Now, solving that, I can cancel the x's from both sides. And assuming that g prime of x is non-zero, I get that g of x equals 0. That's it. That's what we were looking for. That's a root. The equilibria are the roots of g. Now, to determine stability, what do we need to do? We need to take the derivative of the right-hand side with respect to x. That's the derivative of x minus g of x over g prime of x. OK, the derivative of x is 1. That's easy. For the second part, I'm going to need to apply the quotient rule. And I'll get minus g of x, g double prime x, minus quantity g prime of x squared all over quantity g prime of x squared. Now, because g of x is 0, because that's a root of g, what I get is 1 minus g prime over g prime squared. That's 1 minus 1. That's 0. And that means not only are these equilibria stable, they're, they're really stable. They're super stable. And this super stability explains a lot about the convergence of Newton's method. OK, let's turn to a different example, a more fun example. What is the value of the continued fraction that is expressed as 1 over 
1 plus 1 over 1 plus 1 over 1 plus 1 over 1 plus 1 over 1 over blah, 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 etc., etc. Forever and ever, let's call that capital Phi. And how do we evaluate that? Let's think dynamically. Consider the discrete time dynamical system given by xn plus 1 equals 1 over 1 plus xn. Choose an initial condition and then just keep iterating over and over. And what we're going to get is something that hopefully converges to a stable equilibrium. And that would be the value of this continued fraction. So how do we solve for the equilibria? Well, let's consider where xn plus 1 equals xn. Let's call that number phi. And then substituting that into the dynamical system gives me phi equals 1 over 1 plus phi. Multiplying through by the denominator, I get phi squared plus phi minus 1 equals 0. And using the quadratic formula, I can solve for phi. Phi is 1 plus or minus square root of 1 plus 4 all over 2. That's 1 plus or minus root 5 over 2. And I recognize these numbers. These are the golden mean, if I look at the positive root, and the silver mean, if I look at the negative root. Now, this gets a little interesting. I have two equilibria for this dynamical system. Which one of them is the actual limit? Which one is this continued fraction converging to? Let's think, and let's compute stability. How do we determine the stability of these equilibria? We take the right-hand side, 1 over 1 plus x, take the derivative of that with respect to x. What does that give me? That gives me minus 1 over quantity 1 plus x squared. Now, if I evaluate that at the golden mean at 1 plus root 5 over 2, that 1 plus root 5 over 2, that's a number that's bigger than 1. And so when I take 1 plus that in the denominator, square it, that derivative is giving me something that is strictly between negative 1 and 0. It's less than 1 in absolute value. That means this is a stable equilibrium. And that indeed is going to be the value of this continued fraction. Now, I'll leave it to you to argue that when you substitute in the other equilibrium, the silver mean, you're going to get an unstable equilibrium. Okay, let's wrap things up here. The stability criterion is the most important thing that we have yet done in this volume. It is just a perfect example of how to do qualitative dynamics. Even without being able to construct explicit solutions, we can still understand what is happening long-term in limits, thanks to linearization.